Yo, what's up everybody? It's your girl Alicia and I know it's been a minute since I've done a video, but I'm doing one now. Um, miss y'all, miss engaging with people. Um, been a busy couple weeks, month, but uh, I'm back. Um, and I know y'all read the title and y'all probably like, why is this girl doing a video on Star when Star is canceled? Well, I'm glad you asked because Star has somehow made a resurgence um, in conversation on social media and other entertainment platforms and articles because lee daniels obviously it looks like he can't seem to make up his mind whether the show is coming back on whether the show is dead for good we don't know what's going on so that has caused an increase in uh, some of the questions that i have been receiving um some people have been messaging me since the show has ended and i definitely have been responding to people mostly personally via inbox or dm or what have you um but i keep getting some of the same questions and i find myself answering the same questions and i was like you know y'all know how i do if i just keep getting the same questions i'm just gonna do a video because i'm believing that maybe everyone else maybe have some of those same questions or some of those same thoughts so of course this is a place we can engage in and get to see how we really feel about everything that has been going on and y'all know how i do i'm gonna just get right into it um so i'm kind of, i'm trying to like blend everything together so um one of the questions that keeps getting popped up is if star gets picked up will i watch the show again and the answer is yes i will watch the first episode but they have to grab me within five minutes if you don't grab me within five minutes i'm not gonna watch the rest of the episode um simply because if they keep the same writing team i do not believe that they are effective enough to pick up where they left off or to effectively um display what happened at the end of the the wedding scene so i wouldn't even really waste my time but i would be this because i'm i'm a naturally curious person anyway i would want to see how they're going to what they would do if they had the opportunity to actually um come back on again but you know, I don't know. I I will watch the first episode. And I, I probably would stick through the whole thing just to see, like, what are they going to do? How are they going to fix what they so um, masterfully jacked up? That's how I would feel like. But I, I would watch it, and I would want to see uh, what happened. Uh, someone asked what I do, reviews on it. No, I don't see that happening. Um no, I don't see that happen. If it's if it's a bad first episode, because I'm not like that in tune with the show, I wouldn't, you know, um, invest my time with watching it, even though it's only 45 minutes every other week. I wouldn't do it. But um, qu that's like the number one question of, of all I've, I've gotten. Um, the next thing was, do I think that, do I believe if Lee Daniels is lying about the show actually being picked up again? Um, with Lee Daniels, you know, I don't know because... I'm big on integrity, and I don't think Lee Daniels has much of that. It's just my personal opinion based on what I've seen in the media, how he has been painted now. He has pretty much painted himself um, because I'm trying to figure out and, you know, uh, even communicating with the, 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 the group chat on Instagram. I'm trying to figure out how we got back to this place because just a few weeks ago, he was saying, you know, I tried. It ain't happening. And we know that he shopped the show around to BT. Amazon, I believe, and OWN. And a lot of people thought that OWN would pick it up because it's a you know it's Oprah Winfrey's um company or whatever. But it's it is Oprah Winfrey's company. However, she ain't banking like that when it comes to production. Um so that's why one of her other shows um was canceled because it costs too much to actually produce the show. And so I don't see, you know, Fox got bank and they had the opportunity and the the backing to do so. Um those other networks, BT, <laughs> that's a laugh. Um, Amazon, that's allowed too, because Amazon not banking like that when it comes to original shows and, you know, things of that nature as far as production. So it was just interesting. So now I guess we're trying to see who he's shopping the, the show around to. I don't know. I, I just read the, between the lines with him because he did, he never stated that the show was coming back. He just said that I think he promised the fans closure. And so that could mean anything. Um, someone had a good observation or a good uh thought i can't remember who said it but it was like maybe on the last episode of empire he's gonna bring certain people back or maybe they'll be on the last season of empire we don't know that is a thought and it could happen but um i don't know i don't know if he's lying or not i just you know just wait and see because like i said with him 
You got to read between the lines. Any person that you can owe millions of dollars to, talking about Dame Dash, you owe this man millions of dollars and you avoided him even though y'all both in the spotlight. I question your character. I question your integrity. So, I don't I don't know about Lee. We don't know about that one. Um, oh, I'm going to skip this question because it's kind of hard. Um, what was the most overrated song, I believe, for season three? And uh, for me, it was Breathless. I did not understand the hype. I don't understand the hype. Not that it was a bad song. I just believe that Luke's voice and Jude's voice just do not mesh well together. And so I thought it was like most, I mean, and people was going crazy over this song. And I'm like, damn, do y'all like it that much? Or just the fact that it, Luke, Luke James got a song with Jude. I, I, I couldn't until I couldn't tell like where the, um, like where the sensation behind the song was coming from. Like what caused fans to be in such this uproar? Like this song is so amazing. I didn't get it, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, about the song I, and I actually had some someone message me and they were like well you know because I've said this I've answered this question countless of times and they stated that well you know you have to take into account that um Jude excuse me that Luke has a few years over Jude talking about his age and I said well maybe you could have a point which they didn't have a point I'm like maybe you could actually have something to argue if Jude wasn't older than Brittany and Ryan because She's definitely older than them. And Britney's song with Luke was amazing. And we all know So Sick was just on a whole nother level. So I'm like, you know, if you're going to try to make an argument, you got to come way better than that. Because that, that wasn't going nowhere. But like I said, that's just my opinion. Um, another question was, which song do you believe should have been highlighted more on the show? And this was a hard one. But out of all the songs, I really would have liked to see um, the song Damn Daddy have more of an impact on the show and I think we only heard that song once like they were um rehearsing it and it was like a scene where Tiana Taylor was on that episode and we heard it, the song was playing in Alex's like headphones and that was all that we heard but I really that song was like so that song was like so dope it was one of my favorite songs from season two probably one of my favorite songs um from the entire seasons I mean the entire show and I just believe that man they could have did so much with that song because that song is popping as one of my jams I listen to it faithfully. Um, but that's what I would have wanted to see be displayed on the show. Um, I'm probably one of the few people who believe Star was doing the right thing by giving Davis up for adoption. You are. Um, did you see any benefit in her doing so? No. I didn't see any benefit in Star giving up her baby for adoption simply because she knows what it's like to be in foster care. And I just believe that uh, her choice to put him up for adoption was more of I don't want Noah to have the baby rather than I want to do what's best for Davis. Even though we know Noah is a you know um, an addict, but he was doing what he had to do to get himself back together. And I just think you know her uh, trying to assassinate his character in court to me just really showed the type of person that she was. That this was to me so much deeper than I want what's best for Davis. I just think that in some twisted way, and maybe it could have came out if there was a season four. Uh, in some twisted way, it was like her way of getting back at um, Noah for maybe messing with Alice. Like she got this, you know, this issue with him because that was my friend you was messing with. And I think that even though they never really dealt with this part as a woman, if you feeling a, you feeling somebody and he none had sex with you, but emotionally he's not connected to you but he connected to somebody that you know and that you have to see that does something to you and i would have a light for them to explore that a little bit more on the show to make it more believable but i think it was more of a personal thing toward noah than it was more so in her trying to benefit her son that's just my personal opinion um i totally agree with you about writing about the writing of season three where do you think the writers went wrong um the first day they met to discuss season three, because in my mind, I'm like, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall to see like, what were y'all discussing? What was on y'all um, dry eraser board? What were y'all really talking about? How did y'all connect these things? Because uh, they gave us 18 episodes, but I think only like three I was really feeling because none of the things made sense, even from the very first episode of season three. And I have communicated with many 
um, Dalex fans and 90 percent, 90, 90 to 95 percent of the people who watch Star, when season three came back on, everybody was like, when the hell Alex and Derek got back together? How they got back together? What happened? What sparked this? How did they get back to this place? And that was just a question that was never answered. They kind of tiptoed around it. Like when Alex was like, you know, we never really talked about what broke us up in the first place. Like they had these little seeds that were dropped, but they never watered it. They never went back to it. So it was like, how did this really happen? And then some of the things that were just un believable like it's kind of hard to fathom this where we had to wait what like eight or nine episodes for Alex and Noah to even speak words to, to one another and it's like come on you know they really jacked up uh the dynamics of the show and for me I always think about what the show initially was about it's about three girls on their on their way to stardom and about the the, the bumps and the bruises and the, the stumbles and hurdles that come along with that i get it so that's your core that's the core and everything you write about always has to come back to this you know they trying to make it they trying to make it and they got so far away from that i don't know what they were doing like you got the core of a, to make a great story but it just felt it just seemed like everything was undeveloped no time was really spent on it um and you know, I, I got a lot of flack for, you know, got a lot of comments about, um, a lot, and a lot of messages too. People, I've seen that people normally say the nasty stuff now to send me directly. They don't comment or whatever. And that's perfectly fine too, because I have no problem responding. But it's all about the intent. My intent to say what I have to say is, is my opinion, is my perspective, is how I view it. It doesn't mean that it's fact. However, I do believe some of the, a lot of the things I say about the show is fact. And, you know, um, and I know that whole thing, you know, I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my sh and I am too. So that if I'm so like have such strong opinions about other people's stuff, that means I try to work extra hard to make sure my stuff is, is, is straight. I've had people say, hey, I read your book. I had this one person that read it and, you know, I welcome all feedback, whether you liked it or not, so on and so forth. And she was like, um, <laughs> she was like, I thought it was, it, it was very hard for me to follow your story I don't even know her. She was a sister of someone that I knew, an older sister. And she was like, you know, um, it was hard for me to follow your story. I think you had too many characters. And uh, I didn't even know that such and such was white until like chapter nine. If you did put it in there, I must have overlooked it. I'm like, yeah, you overlooked it because when I introduced the character, I stated what his race was. So there are some there are some people who I believe they mean good, but just their approach or the way that they express themselves can be very like, it can come off very nasty. But if your intent is to say, hey, this is what I know that you might want to be careful about this or I see where you're trying to go, I would suggest blah, 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 whatever case may be. But when you coming at somebody crazy, like you didn't even really take the time. I can tell you didn't even take the time to read the whole story because if you did, um, I don't think what you said would have been expressed. Like I ain't saying, you know, uh, I'm the best writer in the world, but she's the first, only person I've ever had say that um, about the book. So I was like, whatever. I don't know you. Your opinion don't really matter anyway, which my opinion to them probably don't matter. But, um, you know, I'm like, but if you go back and look at my videos, I've always stated what was going to happen. This is how I see it's going to happen. I don't, I don't think this show going to get picked up based on blah, blah, blah. Um, a lot of people were, were asking about um, the statement I made about the show get not getting renewed because of the the ratings and you had this misconception about the ratings you have people that was like well they had better ratings than empire they should have canceled empire blah 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 and i'm like well, i don't know what rating stuff you calculate in but they never had better ratings than than empire i can understand people reasoning for want empire to be canceled i can't i, I want to i would prefer star whatever but um i think the reasoning that the the president or whomever stated i thought that was the biggest bunch of crock they could have pulled out their behinds like tell people the truth you did not cancel stars so that empire can have a farewell send-off y'all don't care about shows i, I know shows in a bit moesha moesha was on five six years you ain't care about get they ain't care about no send-off so i'm like come on you play it play Play with kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, they believe that mess. That ain't the reason why uh, Star got canceled. But anyway, um, in the last video, you said the writing, excuse me, you said that the writers messed up when they ended Nalix. What did you mean by that? <coughs> I don't remember exactly what I said, 
But I know I did say something along those lines. Um, but just for clarity, what I was saying was the writers messed up when they ended Nalex and then had no intention on bringing them back. Um, that's what I meant by that because I felt like once you gave the audience a taste of Alex and Noah together, it was like deuces for everybody else. Like nobody else could bring this type of what we saw. And I think even for the people who wasn't feeling them in the beginning, and you had some people who never was feeling them. But I, <clears throat> excuse me, but I just think there were certain things that could not be denied. And I think when you, when, why change something that's working for you? Like that's, that's, that's what I understand. If you trying to lose weight and you drinking smoothies and you know, every morning you have a nice balanced dinner and lunch. And then, the, you know, you see yourself losing weight, excuse me. And then the next week you stop drinking smoothies and you start eating pancakes, grits and biscuits. That's a lot of starch. But you eat that every morning. It's like, dang, I was doing good, but I'm, I'm losing weight with this. Well, what you was doing was, was working. Why did you change it? You know what I'm saying? And then expecting the same results. And that's how I felt about that. You had something that was working. I understand you having them break up, but having no intent to put them back together. I think that was a huge hole in the story because it was just something that was never um, displayed again. You know what I'm saying? And then you have them with these scenes and their scenes are just so powerful and, 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 and electric and all of that good stuff. And then when you put her back with Derek, it's like it was easy to see the imbalance in the relationship, in the... Um, in the uh, chemistry, it was obvious. And that's why I was like, they should have never, if you was going to do that, you should have even put them together because you started something that was just so iconic and then you let it in and then you put them with people that just wasn't living up to that particular standard that we had grown accustomed to. So that's what I meant by that. That's what I meant by that. Um, but, you know, I guess we'll see what happened with Lee Daniels. We'll see if Star comes back on um i was also asked to so who do i believe will pick it up I, I don't know of anybody i don't i don't know of any um outlet streaming service station that will pick up the show um the people that they went to i believe that those were their best options unless i'm just overlooking something and not seeing it but i don't see really anybody t taking the chance on that and one of the issues with the streaming services because people on uh, husband, you know, messaging me about Hulu and all of that. And I think the thing with Hulu is Hulu is owned by Disney. So it, it would have been the same thing, keeping them on Fox. It's a part of Disney now. So they didn't feel like you was worth spending the money on that. And I think the thing that people are forgetting is that it's deeper than just the rights of the producers. It's how much it's going to cost to produce this show. And then I got to pay these people too on top of the, you know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of money that goes to making these shows like that and it's a singing show so you got to book studio time you got to have producers you got to have um you got to have the elect the um oh god i forgot to call them people uh the uh, songwriters the people who work the um the engineer can't think of that word to save my life you got to have an engineer so it's, it's other aspects to this show that's just deeper than just the show itself so it's a lot we'll see what happens if it do get picked up um this is a difficult question. Um, I, I skipped it earlier, but it was like, what are your top four disappointments in season three? I really haven't thought about this. I really haven't thought about that question. Sorry for the person that asked. Um, uh, I think it's too many to narrow down. I really have to sit with that. So I guess I will answer that question. I'm sorry, but I will answer that question um, another time. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I haven't talked about Star in a while uh hopefully everybody is doing great out there with your lives and all of that i'm in florida it's hot as hell <sighs> jesus it'd be 91 degrees at 11 30 <laughs> so oh my god yeah but uh, i hope y'all having a good uh a good life a good life man things just happen so quick so enjoy your life to the fullest live laugh love y'all know how i do i will holler at y'all and y'all be safe out there one